Welcome to tonight's news. I'm your host, Onyx, and I'm joined by Rudy. Tonight, we have the weekly resume. <laughs> Nailed it. TGR. Hey guys, so we have um, kind of butted our heads together to figure out what type of content to go ahead and keep on going with the channel. And something that I've always wanted to talk about is uh, recent stuff that's going on in the gaming industry. So yes. the weekly resume is essentially a roundup of all the stuff that's happening throughout the week and kind of uh, little tidbits of our thoughts and opinions on it. Exactly. So kind of like a podcast setup, but not because we're not going to dive too deep into it. We just want to go ahead and cover uh, what's happening recently. Exactly. So first thing that we're going to go ahead and talk about is uh, Sony uh, and Bloomberg came out with an article recently talking about how they're struggling to figure out their pricing for next gen. A lot of people have said that Sony is essentially doing a let's wait and see sort of uh, tactic in regards to uh, Xbox and their console, which we have seen them do in the past. But um, it, when you go ahead and compare how much power and everything that's going in there, uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, a little over the top and a little bit of crazy what they can go ahead and do. Right now, uh, they're estimating that the cost of a PS5 is $450 per unit. Uh, so you either bump it up to at least 470 or at least that's what people are predicting, $470 to actually make a profit. Um, but 470 is kind of weird. So it is weird. you're looking at, you know, hitting that 499 roof. Uh, which Xbox tried to do that last gen or this gen and it didn't really work out that well mainly because of the connect or you take a loss and a big loss and go for that 30 that 399 that 400 dollars that would be point. a big loss I, I i would not be surprised rudy if they do it at 450 dollars yeah I, I would not like be surprised rudy. straight 450 absolutely 449.99 <laughs> I, I see it happening because they, just think about it, Rudy. We've got. <laughs> I'm trying to do the newscaster here. <laughs> oh, they, I'm sorry. <laughs> think about it this way, Rudy. They have a PlayStation 4 Pro for $399.99. $50 more, you get yourself a brand new PS5. That's a wonderful marketing opportunity. It sure is. Back to you, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think 450 makes sense, just based on that. Yes, they would be pretty much. Not breaking any even. profit, they they'd be break breaking even. even. Yeah, but that's not a bad thing to do. No, going off to the, especially if you want to be like top. Of, if the Xbox Series One X, wait, what's it called again? The the Series X. Yeah, I, Xbox Series Series X. X X or X Series. I Whatever, know. I forget the name around. If that comes out and it's just as powerful as you're saying, I would not be surprised if Microsoft says, "Guys, this thing is a beast and it's five hundred bucks." Yeah, they did it this gen. Yeah. It didn't work out, but they did it. But now they have a reason to as to why it would be five hundred dollars. Exactly. Exactly. So, so I don't know. I definitely think that it's risky. Um, but it's kind of like how you said, uh, what was it with the PS2 where it was like or PS1 where it was like one ninety nine. Right, right. How uh back in nine uh E3 95, I think, 95. or ninety six. The year that the PlayStation One and the Sega Saturn came out. Sega Saturn went earlier in the day during their conference, they announced the price, it was two ninety nine. For the Sega Saturn, and they launched it that same day, which was nuts. Yep. Freaking like, how how do you like uh, shadow drop a console? But Sega did it. One of the reasons why they failed. Um, and then Sony went later. They had announced their PlayStation, and then a guy came up on stage. <laughs> a guy came up on stage and just says one ninety nine ninety nine, and just walks and away. Just walks and up. People lost Mike their up. crap. They were just like, what? Sony, what? You yeah. undercut the competition by a hundred dollars. Yep. And I mean, to be honest, in order for them to be competitive with the PS3 after that rocky launch, yeah, they they took it at a loss. They had to go ahead they did. and discount it. Oh, the PS3 was a hell of a loss. I think. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. My five ninety nine ninety nine though. Exactly. Whew. So it is what it is. But um, anyways, moving on. The next thing that we wanted to go ahead and talk about was Final Fantasy VII. Speaking of PlayStation. PlayStation. Yes, exactly. Um, so. This is something that is kind of more and more common, I feel like, with each and every single uh, game that comes out, especially in today's day and age. Especially Looking... in the, in this late in the generation. Oh, yeah. So the game is rumored to have um, at least 100 gigabytes of, um, of data on of your hard data. drive. That is huge. That is. That's literally Red Dead Redemption 2. That is That, that was a 100 gig install. And the game is coming on two Blu-ray discs, just like Red Dead Redemption 2 did as well. One was for the install. That's insane. Red Dead Redemption 2, one was installed. The other one was the game 
you would play the game on it. That's not So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's happening. And people, there's two sides to this coin. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying, guys, this is a hundred gigabyte game. This is going to be a big game. Yeah. It's going to have a ton of stuff to do. Exactly. On the other end of the spectrum, this is a game that's running on the PS4 Pro. It's going to have possibly 4K textures. Uh, those are very fat. Games like Gears of War 4 and 5 on the PC were like 60, 70 gigs with 4K textures. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if this is also due to the fact that you have a lot of cutscenes with 4K textures. I can see that. If I you mean, have 10 hours of cutscenes, of expect? course, it's like 50 <laughs> gigs right there. You know, so like, you know, I, I'm i still in the camp that the game might be a little short, but I am looking forward to it. And yeah. 100 gigs, I feel like that's that's going to be the norm going forward. Next yeah. generation, I, I guess one terabyte makes sense with SSDs, but damn, dude. No, that's man. one night. That's nine like, games. I feel like... That's nine games that you're gonna be able to have on your on your, your installed at the same time. Two terabytes, but a two terabyte SSD would be expensive. It's way too expensive. I agree, it is expensive. Maybe in the mid gen upgrade. Maybe. Maybe the PS5 Pro will probably have a, a two terabyte SSD. At that point, you know, NAND might be a little bit cheaper. We'll see what happens. Yeah, 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 I exactly. Oh, moving on. We uh, kind of want to go ahead and talk about the movie industry. <laughs> yeah, well, it has to do with video games, or here we are. It does, it does. So um, this came from The Hollywood Reporter. They went ahead and talked about Borderlands getting a movie adaptation. And it's, it's very interesting. It's in the works. Uh, directed by Eli Roth. Eli Roth. If you don't know who Eli Roth is, he's not really a household name. No. He's done, notably, Cabin Fever and Hostel. Cabin Fever being one of his favorite horror films. Cabin Fever? You tried to like push that on me like big time no, back in the day. It wasn't Cabin Fever. Oh, yeah, it was. No, it was Cabin in the Woods. Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah very no. different. No, no, cabin no. something. If it was Cabin, if this was a director of Cabin in the Woods, which I believe that was, um, damn, I forgot his name. We'll put her here. And yeah, right now. There. Um, I would be hype yeah. for this. One hundred percent. Eli Roth, he's just done a few horror movies, yeah. like like whatever. Uh, but apparently the uh, the screenwriter mm -hmm. of this. Uh -huh. is Avi Arad. And if you don't know the name, I believe he is the same dude that worked on like the Castlevania Netflix stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, which by the way, that's coming out soon. I believe, that, I believe. That definitely like is hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I'm wrong, let us know. I probably am wrong. <laughs> that probably, you know what? Give me one second. All right, guys, so I was totally wrong. Uh, I was thinking of Adi Shankar from Castlevania Netflix. He was the one that developed that animated series. Never mind. Avi Arad has worked on things like Iron Man and, and a few like MCU movies and stuff. Never mind. I was totally wrong. My bad. It's all <laughs> That's where the gaming resume, not the movie resume. Exactly. Am I right? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. But yeah, they're, they're making a movie. So yeah, so there cool, you go. Cool, I guess. <laughs> um, Speaking of video games, uh, Xbox Series X apparently has a dedicated audio hardware acceleration, which is kind of insane, uh, if right. I do say so myself. Uh, when it comes to immersion, it is nice to have that beautiful, really good crisp sound. surround sound. Right, I mean, right. you were talking to me earlier about the difference between PS2 and PS3 right. and uh, how that pretty much set kind of the bar the same. and stayed the same yeah. going to the PS4. I mean, right. Uh, right. what were we talking about? The the DTS? Yeah, and... so so PlayStation 2, um, in certain cinematic cutscenes, like, like in Metal Gear Solid 2, for example, it had Dolby Digital only in the cutscenes. But during gameplay, it used a codec called Dolby Pro Logic 2. It just kind of took stereo channels and kind of faked surround sound. Yeah. Uh, then for the PS3, we finally got Dolby Digital and mm -hmm. DTS sound codecs, mm -hmm. and that remained the same also going on to the PS4. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's not... I don't believe games support uncompressed audio. Mm -hmm. I, well, that's not entirely true there is uncompressed audio for games but i don't think most games like fall under the same banner as movies do yeah so with this they're essentially they're going to be able to have actual hardware pushing out better sound on the new exchange consoles which, which is kind of cool that is pretty freaking awesome yeah. in my opinion um i know that mark cerny mark cerny he uh actually confirmed last year that the ps5 will feature a custom uh unit for 3d audio yeah which yeah. i think is pretty awesome as well but just to kind of like have dedicated hardware to yeah. audio like it'll it's keep good. all the audio files happy I'm, i'll <laughs> be happy he'll be happy i'll be happy that's for sure um 
Now, looking on the other side of the spectrum, <laughs> yeah. looking at Nintendo, I, I'm Potato a Witcher mode. fan. I, I'm, a, I'm a Witcher fan, guys. You are a Witcher fan, um, absolutely. So, Witcher 3, when it released on the Switch, was not amazing. It, it, it definitely was Potato Mode. Potato? Uh, I mean, dude, you're playing Witcher on on, port- on a portable console, which is great. I, but yeah, I, it's mode, an amazing yeah. feat, but yeah. you know, you're talking about essentially a, a ridiculously weak console by comparison yeah. to like a PC or a PS4 right. or whatever it may be. So, um, the fact that they got it on there was really amazing, but Switcher, um, or S- Switch's Witcher 3 <laughs> came out with patch 3.6, uh, which apparently added PC cross save support. It's, uh, yeah. Which is awesome. That's really cool. Like, That's really cool. I mean, we were talking about it very briefly before we even started recording. If that is the future of PC games being on the Switch, that is awesome the fact that yeah. you can go ahead and kind of like take your your save and just move it over if you're gaming at home great awesome but if you're on the go you can still continue playing that yeah. same game on the switch yeah that they, more more developers need to do this just because like you're already buying two copies of the game yeah like g- give us a cross save give yeah. us a cr- like that multiplayer games like if i want to play overwatch on the go and take that same account and, and bring it back to my pc i should be able to do that yeah you know fortnite etc like this is just a really cool thing and i hope that with next gen coming up we get more of it i really really do i i agree with you 110 yeah. this is something that you know if everything is going to the cloud right why not let it be accessible no matter what the device exactly exactly i don't know That's really cool me. though really, really cool they brought this out to the to the, uh, to the switch too they oh, also yeah. did some graphical updates and graphical yeah. options they got rid of um, a lot of the blur that was in there yeah so it's kind of cool that they gave they, they gave such a such a big update to the game so it's why i love cd project Red. seriously um the next and final thing that we wanted to go ahead and talk about was the animal crossing new horizons direct which yep. uh we react well i reacted to this morning he, he, he was in the chat um, I was. <laughs> I, he, he loves animal crossing he just doesn't know it yet guys yeah. <laughs> i don't hate animal crossing i just you know He's i've never, never played it, it. i've never, never played it and every it. time i see like trailers and and directs and stuff it's cool to see all the updates but i've never played the game so i don't know what to expect like i see it and it's just like i feel like i gotta play it i feel like i gotta yeah. really get my my you know sink my teeth into it and then i feel like i'll actually be able to understand the love yeah they don't really get it right now yeah there's a lot of people that are out there that have never experienced it before and i think that it's definitely something to to look into it's worth looking into right um there are a lot of things that are coming with this uh new release and i kind of went into the the direct not really knowing 100 percent what to expect there were some things that were shown in previous uh videos but um let's let's go ahead and kind of like run down everything so um they this is from polygon they went in and kind of like listed everything but uh the whole choose your island layout and your uh, hemisphere that is like awesome that is pretty cool i mean it it, it kind of just goes ahead and and if you want to go ahead and have the same weather <laughs> as you're living in real life like perfect yeah. if not if you want the opposite sure go for it that is that is pretty cool though i i yeah. agree i think yeah. it's just it's more in, of like that realism that kind of goes exactly. into it um this is something that i i kind of thought about i was like it would be really cool because as the games have progressed the level of customization have increased you're right. able to do more and more and more things uh as each iteration comes out being able to place where your villagers live that and and as well as like certain shops and things like that that is just awesome it's 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 just, it's just another level of customization it's kind of getting eerily close to sims a little bit in okay. regards to like yeah. what you can do what and what do. you can control yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously you know there aren't like you know meter bars of like social <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that but yeah. it's just it's really cool that you can decorate all that stuff and kind of get it up to going um the other thing that i wanted to talk about was the multiplayer um being able to kind of interact with people and just kind of um go to your friend's island and, right. and interact with them and kind of get i don't know if you saw the best friend i did that they can actually cut down trees and pick up like flowers and so they can interact more with your island when you're best friends I saw yeah that. yeah we'll, we'll be best friends of course <laughs> i'm gonna cut down your trees i'm literally gonna troll you you know that, right? I'm yeah, I, like, I believe hey it. i like your flower patch <laughs> <laughs> they're weeds now um, <laughs> but uh no i just i i hope that nintendo has learned from mario maker 2 and yes. smash yes and yes. fix their freaking online no they man. won't they won't i have no faith in them to do that right now to be honest i love nintendo i love nintendo love them when they were at their worst but they are dumb when it comes to the internet like when it comes to like online anything they just <sighs> nintendo <laughs> 
I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. You 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 know whatever. It's, it's not about that. This is not a conversation about that. It's about New Horizons. <laughs> I hope they fix it. I Maybe hope they fix it as well. New Horizons isn't like a. It's not super intense. It's not a, exactly. It's not, it's not a platformer where you need precision. It's not a shooter. It's, it's not, not a fighting fighter. game. Like it should be. It should be okay. Yeah. If there's some lag, it should you know. Hopefully it, it's better than Pokemon. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah, yeah well, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um, the next thing that they talked about was um, Nook Miles, which are essentially achievements, right? Which, yeah. dude, is so freaking cool. For a second, I was like, wait, did they get rid of bells altogether? Like, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. is this like the new currency? But having like that essential, um, pretty much just like a goal, it's, it's like points, it's like it's you have a credit card, like you get points, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's just the coolest thing ever, yeah. Like, it's a good I, idea. I don't know, I just I, I loved it. Um, uh, one thing that was kind of like a hot topic for a lot of people was the cloud save data, yeah. Um, I know that Nintendo is very Nintendo when it comes to a lot of their stuff, and they're kind of makes like, no sense. I, I, I agree with you, and like the thing is God. that, like, it's still there. Like clearly yeah. the data backs up if they're like, oh, we can go ahead and do this for Yeah, yeah. So so they, they said during the stream that uh depending on the situation, if you have an effective unit or you lose it or whatever. Or it gets stolen. Yeah, they'll be able to back up the, the data from somewhere and potentially put it on your new console. I mean, it's just so weird. It's such it's a Nintendo, Nintendo thing. thing. Nintendo, dude. Like, hey, if you lose it, call us. We got you. Like, but only sometimes. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you kidding it's, me? It's just ridiculous, man. Like they're worried about people cheating, but it's like, what are they gonna cheat? Like a million bells? Well, how's that? How is that breaking the ecosystem? Like, it, this isn't online. It's not an online game. I don't know. It's uh, it's just weird, man. It, it's it's definitely like a really weird take on it, and I I honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. Like what what happens when you know, you, like the coral switch that's coming out soon, the switch light. Right. Let's say right now I'm like I want to go ahead and I want to play you know the game. It comes out March 20th, but the Coral Light uh, comes out in April. In April, right? What happens if I start playing here and I want to keep on playing over there? You're screwed. Exactly. You, you better call Nintendo and be like, Hey, is this, is this a special situation? I paid more money for your crap. I paid your job, sir, on the phone or ma'am on the phone. Can I get this transferred over? That's what you're gonna tell them. Yeah. And be like, I, I literally just paid probably three days worth of your job. Come on, bud. WTF, man. Come on, bud. Sorry for the headphone use. I'm sure it's you heard okay. that. It's okay. It's <laughs> okay. But no, that's, that's definitely something that's there. Um, one of the things that somebody mentioned in the middle of that stream was that it kind of looks like they um, took New Leaf and Happy Home Designer and kind of like mashed it together yeah. and, and put it onto an island. Yeah. Which I'm okay with. Um, if you guys have played uh, Pocket Camp, which I stopped once I needed the, the microtransactions to proceed. Yeah, money. I don't like it. But um, no, like, it's just, it's cool being able to, like, design things. I, I noticed that there was a lot more uh, accessibility in regards to what you can do and move things around and kind of, like, group things and then move them together on the wall or whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah. It, and, like, the fact that you can take your tent and, and essentially expand it and then eventually get like an actual home yeah like it's just the the possibilities are just endless um i don't know i i definitely think that it's really cool um also the the scalability and accessibility in regards to uh changing your island like taking your shovel and pretty much oh yeah you want to go ahead and add land and kind of like that's really it. cool I, like, I gotta give them that that's pretty like, cool dude that is so awesome yeah, that you can do like cool. terraforming You're like oh i it's it's just i know that um and then like the bridges and everything like that like everything that came out like dude ugh. I, yeah. I am excited, guys. He is. He is very excited. I am very, very excited. Like, very excited. I, I came <laughs> I came downstairs after streaming that reaction, and, and like, my wife and I were like, dude, this is going to be great. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that there's two sides of the coin. There's some people that are just like, what is this? Blah, 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 blah. But, um, but still, yeah. It's it's still it's still a fun game. Um, obviously, there are going to be updates uh, for seasonal events and things Pretty like cool. that. Pretty cool. They're going to do that. Keep um, the game alive with the, the live updates and stuff. Oh, yeah. Free updates. With yeah. the free updates and everything like that. Like, I just, I think that's really cool. And um, even now, if we boot it up, my GameCube copy of Animal Crossing, all that stuff still happens. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just, it's such a freaking, I mean, there's plenty of weeds everywhere. I booted yeah, it up yeah. the other day, but it's still a really cool experience. Yeah, for sure. And it's something that's there that, I, I mean, I would definitely, definitely recommend, so. Okay. Um, but, uh, are there, was there anything else that? No, I can't think of anything else for the weekly resume, for our <laughs> inaugural weekly <laughs> resume episode. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> Next time we'll get the blazers and. and oh my god! Oh, hey, uh, tonight's was, uh, tonight's, uh, we need to get like paper to like play around with. Oh <laughs> yeah, here I got the bamboo stick. Yeah. So uh, tonight's news, yeah, you saw what happened, guys. Uh, we talked about Animal Crossing and, and Final uh, Fantasy VII and all the other stuff. So and, uh, pretty interesting. All, next couple of weeks. That's all good. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all good. good. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, anyways, uh, guys, if this is something that you guys enjoyed, uh, let us know in the comments below. This is something that's relatively new. Yeah, um, literally the first episode. Yeah, it's literally the first episode. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down. Let us know. Um, and how can we uh, improve? How can we improve? Tell us. That's another thing. Let us know so we can go ahead and give this to you. Indeed. So, <laughs> yeah, rip, bro. Um, but yeah, uh, aside from that, I mean, anything else you want to add, dude? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Whoever's still here. Yeah, exactly. We appreciate you. We love you like love a packet of cake. Indeed. All right. All right, guys. See you next time. Deuces. Have a good night. Have a good night. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more and stay up to date, subscribe, hit the little bell, and join our Discord. If you want to support the channel, please check out our Patreon or hit the join button below. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.